ERC, quality service since 1972. Repairing TVs, console stereos, electronic musical instruments, pinball machines, arcade games, and more. Call 836-0454. This is James Spann. You have clicked onto the Weather Extreme video. This is for Friday morning, the 5th of September. And again, uh, as has been the case for the past four or five days, the focus is on the tropics this morning. Let's get right to it. We'll take a look at some Skycam images around this part of the great state of Alabama. We'll begin with our Jasper Skycam up in Walker County. That's uh, the view from the top of the King Building. A little light rain up there at times overnight. Not much, but a little bit. Trustville, northeast of Birmingham. That's looking south down Chalkville Mountain Road. And we'll cross the state line and check the Skycam in Meridian, Mississippi. And again, uh, they've had some rain uh, at times over the past 24 hours. Uh, the sky mostly cloudy there this morning. Here's the uh, big picture this morning. What's left of Gustav is up in Canada now. It's finally been picked up and it's out. And we've got this uh, really a sheer axis left over from that and also the uh, result of Hannah. And accordingly, there might be a shower in spots today. In fact, there's a look at the radar this morning. You can see a few echoes over uh, the northern half of the state, north of Interstate uh, uh, 20. So we'll mention scattered showers today, but again, rain's not going to be a big deal. This is the expected rain for the next five days, and uh, Hannah's rain will be running from the coast of the Carolinas north up to the coast of Maine. And note that Ike's rain begins to show up down there over the Bahamas, headed towards South Florida. And by the way, this is valid through Tuesday evening, and uh, really Ike is the big story in weather in the next five days. And we've got, you know, three out there. We've got Hannah, a tropical storm, Ike, the hurricane, and then Josephine, a tropical storm. And really, we'll just focus on uh, the two lead storms this morning. There's a look at Hannah, the tropical storm that's uh, east of uh, Melbourne. And the radar this morning showing a few bands of uh, showers over Florida with that. And that's moving north. And uh, again, it, it sucked in a bunch of dry air yesterday. And uh, more than likely, it's not going to be a hurricane at the time of landfall. The uh, track there takes it up to the coast of the Carolinas late tonight and then northeast. And again, uh, just, just going to be kind of windy and wet. Might be enough wind to blow down some power lines and trees along the way. But uh, this is not going to be a big, super-duper newsworthy storm there. The, the big one is this one. This is Ike. And uh, we note that Ike is, is being sheared. You can see the outflow is a bit restricted on the uh, north and uh, northwestern side of that thing. So uh, as expected, it might weaken a bit over the next 24 hours. We'll look at the modeling, and there's pretty good agreement, actually. Yeah, there's always outliers. The, the limited bear tropics, throw that thing out. It's got it moving down toward uh, Central America. The no gaps is the outlier to the uh, right. It's got it hooking north way before Florida, but most of the models bring it right towards South Florida early next week, and that is... Uh, uh, very problematic for Miami. Uh, we'll take a look at some specific models. How about the uh, wharf? Goodness gracious, that, that brings the thing uh, really down there below Miami, between Miami and Key West, as a uh, hurricane looks like the intensity is 916 millibars. That's a big one. The GFDL is really an outlier to the south. It brings it over Cuba, and accordingly, it's got a much weaker system there, the uh, wind velocities there would suggest a Category 1 or a Category 2. Um, we'll take a look at the European. It's an outlier. It's got the thing not making the turn to the north. It's got it getting down there in the southern Gulf. Uh, this is valid Thursday morning of next week. Could that happen? Yes. Is it likely? I'd say probably not, but you can't rule out anything at this point. Uh, here's the official track from the Hurricane Center, and it's got it coming right up into uh, the Miami area Tuesday of next week as a major hurricane, a Category 3. And obviously everybody from Key West up to Miami and Fort Lauderdale will have to be in the process of thinking preparation now. And again, note the turn to the north, and we'll take a look at the GFS here and see what it does with it. Uh, this is where we are at uh, 1 o'clock today at 500 millibars. Nice trough over the central U.S., and that's turning Hannah north. And again, you can see what's left of uh, Gustav is up there northeast of Detroit with that trailing moisture axis down through here. And really, again, we'll mention scattered showers today, but I don't think it'll rain that much. Tomorrow, the uh, moisture axis is still kind of lingering here. But for the moment, we've only got a small chance of a shower. 
And I think that's that's correct. If if we'll just watch model trends and maybe if that's right, we'll bump it up a little bit. But just keep in mind a shower possible in spots. Hannah tomorrow is up on the middle Atlantic coast. It's a tropical storm. Sunday, Hannah is exiting the coast of Maine. We are bone dry Sunday. And then uh, Monday of next week, we stay relatively dry. Got a cold front north of us coming down the flow. And there's Ike coming up through the Bahamas. The GFS does not show it very well developed. Uh, Tuesday of next week, Ike approaches South Florida. That front comes in here Tuesday. And again, it looks like we might need to insert some risk of a shower Monday night or Tuesday morning with that front. Uh, it will not have a lot of moisture to work with. And a nice high is behind that around St. Louis. Uh, Wednesday of next week, the GFS, again, not really developing Ike. It's uh, got a broad, low-pressure area over South Florida. Uh, and then we'll go to uh, Thursday in the upper levels, and you see that strong trough coming down across the northern plain states. That's the one we think that will be turning Ike to the north. Uh, down below that, Ike pretty much sits in the same place over South Florida. And then Friday of next week, a week from today, very strong trough. Uh, rotating through, and uh, that's going to take Ike and turn it north, if this is right. And, and I think the general idea is it kind of Ike kind of merges, uh, moves up toward the Carolinas, merges with that cold front that's coming through here. And then uh, one week from tomorrow, the 13th, uh, we get into cooler and drier air. Ike is uh, on the way out over in the northeast U.S. Remember, skill in uh, forecasting intensity in the specific location of a hurricane five days in advance is not that good. We're just looking at speculation here, but I think the Hurricane Center is right on it as usual with their track coming up toward Miami. In one peak at the end of the cycle, the uh, 20th, a uh, very high amplitude pattern for the westerlies up to the north and down below that. Uh, uh, again, we're looking at that cool air with interest over Canada. Doesn't that look nice? Getting deeper and deeper into uh, fall, of course, this is meteorological fall. The official fall is out there about the time this map is taken. But, uh, again, we look forward to those golden days of fall. October is my favorite month of the year. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this morning. We'll have notes on our blog. That's alabamawx.com. Always frequent running notes over there, so check in often. The next video here by 3.30 today. And if you are in north-central Alabama, we invite you to watch us on television this evening, ABC 3340 News at 5, 6, and 10. Again, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful Friday, and God bless.